Have you ever wondered if a Chinese internet censor feels guilty about doing the government's dirty work? Well, we got a sneak peek into the life of one such censor, and it is fascinating. Welcome to China Insights. I'm Holly Kellum. So it was the Substack Mang Mang that got the interview, and the censor they spoke to, which they're calling Chen Li Jia, currently works for a company that operates China's largest search engine. The article didn't say which one, but my guess is that he works for Baidu, which has over 50% of the market share for search engines in China. Chen Li Jia describes himself as being on the lowest rung of society and says he took the job for the money and the money only. Nevertheless, he says he doesn't feel bad about quashing free speech, at least most of the time. So just to set the scene for you, there are over a billion users of this search engine. And as you can imagine, there is a small army of people who make sure that what people are seeing is all in line with the government's thought control work. When asked what the most sensitive kind of content is, he said political security. And who sets the standard for what political security and other sensitive topics are? Well, he said we use the same criteria as domestic media. Whatever they aren't allowed to report on, we're not allowed to let pass. The most obvious examples are content related to senior political officials and their family members, or to darker episodes in Communist Party history. We're mandated to delete all of those. For example, in the lead up to June 4th, which is the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre, he says censors have to work overtime to censor all the posts about that day. As you can imagine, there's a lot that the Communist Party doesn't want people to remember about that day. The Chinese military essentially mowed down hundreds, if not thousands, of innocent student protesters who were calling for modest democratic reforms to the government. Chen Li Jia says that as soon as June 4th comes around, there are always some people who, for some reason, try to stir up the public's memory. Yes, those pesky little plebs, they just can't understand the government's benevolence in memory holding the whole event. He says June 4th has become a sort of folk festival. During those particular periods, censorship guidelines and tactics undergo a temporary shift. Usually it's let them post first, we'll censor later. But around sensitive dates, it's censor first. The other sensitive date is October 1st, which is China's national day. Gee, I wonder why the government's favorite holiday is so controversial. When asked what sensitive words he has to be on the lookout for, he says off the top of his head, egg hole, which is a homophone for bullet hole, and Satan fried rice come to mind. Both of those are puns mocking the death of Mao Zedong's son during the Korean War. Internet legend has it that Mao Anyang was killed by American bombers after he inadvertently revealed his position by lighting a fire to cook egg fried rice on the battlefield. Also, the words new and frontier and all of their various homophones are considered dangerous because they refer to Xinjiang. Xinjiang province, which literally means new frontier in Mandarin, is home to the largest Uyghur Muslim population in China, and the U.S. and several other countries consider China's internment of Uyghurs there a genocide. When asked how the company trains him about the atrocities happening in Xinjiang, he says they just showed us a documentary, which we watched, and that was it. The company's goal isn't to teach us the truth, it's to make us delete things. In other words, they want us, cogs in the censorship machine, to be aware that the topic is sensitive so that we'll delete anything that touches on it, but they don't care what we think or feel about it. Another sensitive topic he has to watch out for is the People's Liberation Army, the military arm of the Chinese Communist Party. He says around sensitive dates, it is completely forbidden. Even comments praising the government and the PLA for restoring order are forbidden. The point of this censorship is not to channel public opinion in a certain direction. Whether it's positive or negative is beside the point. The point is for censors to delete all evidence of an event in the hopes that the public will completely forget about it. Yikes, even positive content about the government gets deleted. They are not taking any chances, apparently. So what's the criteria for deleting someone's account? Well, it's pretty simple. He says there is no process. If I feel that an account has published something problematic, I can just shut it down. Afterwards, I pass a list of those suspended accounts to my supervisors. But don't they need to be reviewed by a manager? Well, apparently not. 
He says shutting down accounts is simple. Sometimes you need to provide a reason why you shut it down. For example, maybe they mentioned June 4th, but for the most part, I have the authority to decide whether the account closure is permanent or temporary. Has he ever felt guilty about doing what he's doing? Well, he says, I've never felt guilty. It's just a job. And if I'm going to do it, I should do it well. What about doing this all day long, day after day? Doesn't it take a toll on him, on his mental health? Nah, he says, I don't even feel politically pessimistic. To be honest, the only pressure from my job comes from worrying about mistakes. I'm very afraid of making a mistake, which is to say I'm afraid of not censoring bad content. As far as I can tell, none of my coworkers have any negative feelings either. Nobody cares about politics. These topics aren't related to our daily lives. One of my colleagues is actually Mao Zedong's biggest fan. Many see themselves as helping the nation avoid chaos and avoid societal instability. From that perspective, how could we feel pessimistic or worried about politics? There are things that weigh on his conscience, though. For example, content about COVID and the Zhengzhou floods, as well as a piece called 10 Days in Chang'an, written by someone called Jiang Shui, about people starving during COVID lockdowns in Xi'an. Deleting those made me feel guilty, he says. But of course, these were really obvious things. If I didn't delete them, someone else would. They were too blatant. I couldn't let them slip by if I tried. He says it's things like those that do make him want to quit, but the people around me will console me by saying that if I hadn't censored it, someone else would have. Some of my friends will also ask me what I'd do if I didn't do this. Everyone knows that survival is the most important thing. Morality and ethics are secondary to survival. Even so, he says, 2021 was an extremely difficult year for me. The Xi'an lockdown and the Zhengzhou flood happened that year. That's when my guilt peaked. I really wanted to leave the company and never work as a political censor again, but I couldn't find any good opportunities. I feel conflicted about working as a political censor. It's familiar work that keeps me fed, but on the other hand, it's painful. My guilt was even heavier during that time because I was living through the same things. Does he think he deserves sympathy from people? He says, censors do deserve some sympathy. If I were to judge us from the outside, I'd say we're just a group of people struggling to make a living. It's really that simple. There's nothing that complex about it. As for questions of so-called justice, none of us think too deeply about it. If you can't make a living, if you don't have enough to eat, where's the justice in that? Call it helplessness or call it tragedy, but for people on the bottom rung of society, we really don't have any other choice. He also says he rejects the moral judgment made about the job, asking, shouldn't the middle class be the one subject to criticism? Why is criticism always heaped on those of us at the bottom? Instead, the question ought to be, who created the position of censor? We are just workers after all. The problem isn't the job, it's the people who created this job. Critics should aim their barbs at the source of the problem, not at workers like us, who are just carrying out orders. Cogs in the machine are replaceable. If it weren't us, they'd just find someone else to do the work. I think there's a phrase that sums this up well. Responsibility should be commensurate with power and position. The common people shouldn't have to shoulder the burden of too much social responsibility. It's already hard enough for ordinary people to survive without having to bear the weight of so many expectations. So, what do you think about this? Do you feel any sympathy for him? And what responsibility do you think censors have in covering up the Communist Party's crimes? Let us know in the comments below. And as you may have seen, this channel is under new management. We're trying out different formats and kinds of content. So please let us know in the comments what you like about this channel already and what more you would like to see. Once again, I'm Holly Kellum and this is China Insights.